I was young, I was a professional basketball player. Oh, almost. In fact, I was on the top local team, and I was 12. Then, one day, someone told me, come on, Alexia, you are too small to play basketball. My dream was crushed. But I had a backup dream, and no one knew about it. My first day on a boat, on a sailing boat, was with my parents. I was free. Lucky me. And then I started training, sailing, working out every day. At 20, I realized that I was actually one of the best sailors in my age group. So it was time for me to take the next step and find a sponsor. So um, it was September 2003. At this time, I was a waitress in a restaurant uh, to pay for my studies and my races. So September 2003, with 20 euros in my pocket, I jumped in my car, I drove to Marseille to get a sponsor. A month later, I had my first transatlantic from France to Brazil, single-handed. Thank you. Oh, it's only the beginning. <laughs> Since then, I, I've crossed Atlantic 14 times. 14 times. And I've raced with the most famous sailor, Poupon, Perron, Arto. Maybe you don't know them, but in my world, they are as famous as Angelina Jolie or DiCaprio. <laughs> so it was, um, it was June 2008. I was finishing a race, and I was getting close to the shore. Then all of a sudden, this striking, horrible smell. I couldn't believe it. I can still smell it, you know. Trash and waste everywhere at sea. It was too much for me, and I had to do something about it. But what? My next project was going to be sailing solo around the world on a 60-foot boat. So I was wondering why didn't I do oceanographic research during this trip. This will be my next project. I was now on a mission, and I start reading and talking to everyone. Remember, 200 years ago, when Prince Albert I did this huge experiment with many scientists on board, and some famous one as Charcot, this was huge for the time. So I will do the same on my own with the means of today. September 2009, I made a decision. I will gather data on salinity and temperature for oceanographic research. So I transformed my racing boat into a research boat. Uh, I had to find money for that, <laughs> because the boat, the campaign, instruments for scientists, this will cost a lot. But at one point, you have to stop doubting your life and go for it. I want you to do something. I will do it. His Serene Highness Prince Albert II and his foundation, the MIT, the Oceanographic Institute, the um, French Ministry of Research, they all gave me their support. And a thousand kids were now following me on social network. But at the same time, I had to convince scientists that I will work for them. I am only a sailor. 
I'm definitely not a scientist. And you know, at first, people always say no the first time. I'm used to that now. It's not the first time I met a no. I finally convinced them, and I was now working for European programs and International Atomic Energy Agency. For those who still don't get it, I was now in the Hollywood studios of uh, Oceanographic Research World. So, um, this is the kids who are following me, that was amazing. So, I finally left Monaco the 11th of January 2010. I remember well the first night at sea. The moon was shy, and the wind gusts were blowing up to 70 kilometers per hour. The famous waves of Lion Gulf were shaking me. I was like in a washing machine. But everything was fine. I already had 9,000 data on salinity and temperature with my thermosalinometer. This is the thermosalinometer. <laughs> During the course of my trip, I had to face many obstacles. And that one, it was already a week I was sailing, and I was approaching Strait of Gibraltar. The wind was crazy. There was cargo ship everywhere around me, so many cargo ship. I was feeling like on a busy motorway, like on my bicycle with trucks moving around me, but trucks like 100 meters high. That was a nightmare. And I really didn't want to crash, so I only slept five minutes. It had been 48 hours I didn't sleep. That's how long it took me to cross the Strait of Gibraltar. That was really hard. to come with me next time. <laughs> so, 31st of May, I had my 14th bottle collected for International Atomic Energy Agency, and 800,000 data collected with my thermal salinometer on salinity and temperature. I felt so good. I was about to go home. Then, all of a sudden, Something happened. I was sleeping inside my boat. Oh, sorry, I don't have a picture for that. Because my battery died, and this always happens in this moment, so please picture this. I was sleeping in my boat, and I heard something. Two whales were singing close to my boat, so I jump out of my bed, I run on the bow, and I saw that they wanted to tell me something. I saw a circle of whales in front of my boat. I saw a sign, and oh my God, a mother whale was giving birth in front of my boat. This is one of the unforgettable memories of this trip. So it took me 50 days um, to reach Cape Town from Monaco. Then I went to Rio de Janeiro, I went to New York and back to Monaco, nearly five months at sea. I was the first woman sailing solo on ocean for scientific ends. Thank you. And I had sailed a total of 40,000 kilometers. So now, the results, one million data were collected on salinity and temperature. Those data are now free for 
all the students and scientists working on, on climate change or oceanographic research. Thanks to this collection of data, we know much more better now about radioactive pollution in the oceans. That's amazing what we did. And now, I know something. I am a sailor, but I am not just a sailor. I am a sailor working for science. Thank you.